On today's episode of Unboxing with a Rocket Scientist, we're going to take a look at the Estes Nike Smoke. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components, and yes, I am a real rocket scientist. Today we're going to unbox the Estes Nike Smoke. Now this is a re-release of an original rocket that I actually built uh, around 2014. Uh, actually, my daughter built it, and this is her rocket that she built um, in 2014. And it flew great. Uh, we've flown it a number of times, and it's kind of beat up. But I wanted to see if the new version is any different from the old version. So let's open it up and see what's inside. So I'm going to cut the tape here and open this up. And let's dump out some of the parts. All right. So the first thing we have is the nice body tube. And it's got pre-slotted fins, tabs for the fins. And those are not laser cut. Um, you can actually see these are die cut, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, that's really nice. It's a little bit more expensive the way to do it um, because it requires tooling, but um, per piece is actually cheaper. Um, so this is the uh, engine mount tube, and this is heavy duty. Um, this is a 29 millimeter diameter, so you'll, you'll take 29 millimeter diameter engines. Uh, Estes, they recommend on the box um, an F15-4 for 600 feet altitude or an E16-4. Uh, there's other motors that you can use. Um, there's Aerotech motors and Cesaroni motors that are also 29 millimeter diameter. And they'll actually put this thing higher up in the sky than the Estes motors, higher and faster, which is always much more fun. Oh, this is a blow molded nose cone. Um, this is plastic and it's poly, um, high impact polystyrene. Um, and it's got um, details that are molded in, which is really nice. Uh, let's check the fit on the tube. It's, it's good. It's, I think it's a little loose, but that's okay. Um, just a wrap of a masking tape around the perimeter just to uh, stiffen it up a little bit. Uh, this is the loop for the parachute, and it's really heavy duty. This part here in the middle will be pushed out or cut out with a knife when you build the rocket. Um, it's got a very nice rounded tip on the, t on the top. Um, so that's the blow molded nose cone. Let's see what else is in the box. Okay, the box is empty. Um, here, let's open this first. This will be the printed stuff. And so this is the shock cord anchor. And that thing is massive. Uh, normally, it would probably be about half that size. Um, that's not going to come out. Uh, this right here is the important warranty information. Um, and on the back, it also has the size of the field that you will need, you know, the launch range that you'll need per what kind of engine you're using. Um, so if you're using an F motor, you're going to be wanting a thousand foot square uh, launch site. Uh, this is the instruction sheet. And it's a printed instruction. And look at how long it is. So that's a six page instructions. Um, I like these instructions. They're very well illustrated. And it has the paint pattern on it. That's nice. Um, the Estes instructions are always nice. Um, I don't see anything that I don't like about those. That's nice. So good and in, good quality instructions there to make it easy to build. This right here is the decal sheet, and these are water slide decals. So what you'll do is you'll cut them out, um, and you're going to lay them in water for a few seconds. And the adhesive on the back will soften and it will allow the 
um, the plastic part to slide off the paper. They're really thin. They're very delicate. Um, the nice thing about them when they when you put them on the rocket, um, it does. There's no bumps, um, so you can run your finger over and you can't even feel the decals. They're so thin. But the downside is that they are very fragile. Um, but if you want a quality kit, um, this is what you need. All right, so this bag contains everything else. Let's open that up. Okay, so first right here, this is um, an elastic shock cord. And that's got to be like 70, that's six feet long at least. Um, this is heavy duty, which is why you need that heavy duty uh, shock cord anchor. Um, this is made out of uh, rubber and uh, polyester um, um, thread. Um, these can, you got to watch these um, that over time, the rubber inside of them can get kind of brittle and you don't know it because of the fabric. Um, so when you stretch it, the rubber may break. This is over time. I mean, maybe like two years into the future. So just keeping that in mind, if you're going to keep this rocket around a long time, is that um, you have to check this, you know, always pull on it really tight, really hard to make sure that uh, this is not broken and that it's not broken anywhere. It still has some give to it. Um, this right here is the screw-on engine retainer, and that will go onto the back of this engine mount. So this gets glued onto that, and then your engine will slide in, and you can screw it on. Um, they're meant for engines that have um, a lip on the back, so that's the thrust ring. Um, because the Estes motors, they're, they're a cardboard tube, they don't have a thrust ring, so they do give you this thrust ring right here. Um, that's going to be glued inside. If you're using the Aerotech composite motors, just leave this out. Um, you're not going to need that. Um, this right here, I am not sure what that's going to be for, but that's going to go over the top of that. Uh, let's see if we can find out. It's called a green spacer ring, and it's probably um, for the... Uh, Engine mount tube. Okay, so that is, um, it actually is to stiffen up one of these rings. So inside of here are the plastic fins, and there's four of them. They call for that green ring to go to, um, it, it, it will slide on there, and it's kind of tight. So there's usually like a burr on the inside. If you take your fingernail and you can smash it down on the inside to make that ring go over that tube a little easier. It's really tight. There we go. Um, they call for that ring to go like that in the instructions. That kind of centers up that ring, make sure that it's not crooked sideways like that. Um, and then these here, this one is going to go in the middle. And you see on the fins, it has that little notch right there. That's going to slide into that um, to make sure that it's locked in place so those fins stay perpendicular to the tube. And then this will be your aft ring on the back. Um, so these are plywood, which is nice. I don't remember the original one being plywood. I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell. Um, so that might be an upgrade if it is plywood and the original. I think the original one was paper. Um, so that's a nice little upgrade. And I said, these are the fins. Um, you can see they're molded plastic. Um, they have an airfoil. It's called a double diamond airfoil because you got um, a wedge coming this way and a wedge coming that way. Um, on the real rocket, that's how it was built. This is a scale model. It's like 1.5 five or five point five to one um, so the real rocket is like five times as big as what this is um, but on the real rocket they had these airfoil fins um, because that rocket was meant to go supersonic um, and this is a good supersonic airfoil 
Um, this rocket, this model rocket, is not going to go supersonic. Um, so you don't need a supersonic airfoil, but it is a scale model, so you will, uh, it will, it's, it's required for that. Um, so these look pretty nice, as I said. They go together. They have these um, spars in them, and there's a little groove that they go into. That's nice. And then there's one little pin there to go into that little hole right there. So there's four fins. Yeah, these are nice. Um, he, these are your launch lugs. Um, they are standoffs. Because this has a bigger nose cone than the tube, you can't use ordinary launch lugs because the rod would hit that nose cone right there. So when you put these on, it raises the launch rod away from the top of the nose cone here so that it can slide easily up and down the launch rod. Um, so these are nice. Um, so they're just going to get glued onto the tube using super glue. And then finally, um, inside of here, we have a parachute. And this is a cloth parachute, so this is... Um, a nylon parachute. Um, it's pretty slick. Uh, let's open it up and see. This has got to be like 24 inches wide. Um, and it's got um, string that's, that's sewn on to the corners. And it's got a hem on the edges to keep it from fraying. That's pretty nice. That's a nice parachute. It's not as soft as silk. Uh, you, can, you can hear it, it's kind of um, crinkly, uh, but that should be fine. Um, it's going to be folded up nice into your rocket. Uh, so that is the Nike Smoke, and it is very much as how I remember it, except for now it has these plywood rings, which I, I don't remember the original having plywood rings, but it might have. Um, so... This is the Nike Smoke rocket from Estes, and you've been watching Unboxing with a Real Rocket Scientist. My name is Tim Van Milligan. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true. <laughs>